Hello, my front porch friend. Come on in. I'm so glad you could join me today. Oh, I would love to have been outside in those woods. It's one of those warm, wonderful winter days. But I'm afraid at the moment your friend is a bit homebound. Down in my back. Ever had those muscle spasms? I pray not. But God answers prayer. So I'm asking you to pray for me. And I've got so much to talk to you about today, I hardly even know where to begin. Speaking of God answering prayer, that's the very kind of stuff we're going to be talking about today. The power of prayer. You remember last week, <clears throat> we talked about 2 Chronicles 4.10, the prayer of Jabez. Remember that? And remember the very last part of those verses where it says after his prayer, and God answered his request and God gave him what he granted, what he asked for. We determined last week that this year, you and I want to pray prayers that God answers. And what are those kind of prayers? Well, <clears throat> in Luke 11, 1, there's a very important verse there that kind of set the course for me for these next few weeks for you and me as intercessors. And it's the verse where the disciples, the Bible says that the disciples say to Jesus, Lord, teach us to pray. Oh, I'm so glad they asked that because he was more than willing to teach them. And in answer to their question, he says to them, very simply, simply, he says, you pray like this. And then Jesus begins to lay out what we know as the Lord's Prayer. It's also recorded in Matthew 6. Now, honey, you and I both know if Jesus prayed it, <laughs> it's going to be answered. Now, I know this is a familiar passage, and almost all of you probably already haven't memorized the whole thing, and I hope you do. You should because that would certainly help you with where we're going today. But in response to that question, Lord, teach us to pray. He gives them this, what we know as the Lord's Prayer, this model prayer. And you know what? The more you study it, the more you realize you might just call it the perfect prayer. It just has everything in it in one prayer. And not even a long prayer. It's just a few verses, but power packed. And I remember years ago when I was a young girl, you remember Larry Lee? He wrote a book on this very thing, on praying the Lord's Prayer. And if the disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray, and in 2023, you and I are saying, Lord, teach us to pray, then let's start with the prayer that he prayed as an example of how to pray. And Many of you probably already do this, but let's just refresh ourselves on it. This is something I have done and continue to do. I've done it many, many, many times for many years in prayer. I love this because now, I mean, there's there's no set way, I mean, necessarily of prayer, except that, that it's, it's set that you pray in faith and it's set that you pray the will of God. Those things are set when we pray. But this model of prayer is a wonderful way for us to just break down the most important elements of prayer. Like for instance, let's just start with the very beginning. This is something, like I said, I do this almost daily. <clears throat> it starts off like this, and Jesus prayed it. Hang on, let me get my back situated. Hold on. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Jesus starts it like this. Our Father, which is in heaven. You can say it with me. Hallowed is your name. Now, when I pray this, I just stop right there. Sometimes I just stop with my father. And I just stop right there and just thank him for the fact that he is my father and he lets me call him father. And then I, sometimes I just move on kind of quickly. My father, which is in the heaven, hallowed is your name. One of the things that you can do is just stop right there and begin to meditate on the power of his name. Lord, I love to tell him, your name is above every name. According to your word, God, I just thank you that your name, that you've been given a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow of things in heaven and things in earth. I thank you that your name is far 
are above all powers and principalities and every name that is named. Oh, I just begin to stop right there and just praise him for the power of his name and telling him, God, your name is hallowed. Your name is holy. Your name is set apart from every other name. And I worship your name. I declare your name is established in my life as a strong tower. Don't you love that? So that's where we start with this prayer. Then it moves on. Now, this is important. Jesus said the very next thing he prays is this, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed is your name. Then he says, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Oh, now if God answered that for Jesus, he will answer it for us as we are praying it. Why? Because we're praying the perfect will of God as Jesus always did. I love this because he says, Lord, your kingdom come. That's so huge. This You could stay right there on those two little passages, those two little statements for a very long time. Your kingdom come. What does that mean? You know, Jesus says it in, in his writings that the kingdom of God is within us. He even tells us in Romans what the kingdom of God is. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy, the Holy Ghost. That's the essence of the kingdom, okay? I like to think of the kingdom of God as the place where God's will is manifested. It's a place. It is a place. And it's inside of the believers. That inside of believers, the will of God should be being manifested. Inside of believers, through the blood of Jesus, we have been made righteous. So we are carrying righteousness. We are carrying peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. So the kingdom is in us, and yet the kingdom is coming. So the kingdom is here, and the kingdom is coming. So I love it that, that it's, it's not just enough to say, well, it's only in me, when Jesus said to specifically pray, Lord, your kingdom come. So that means... As until Jesus returns, we're the carriers of the kingdom on the earth. But someday, according to Revelation, the book of Revelation, I believe it's in chapter 11, it says that the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our God. That means that someday, oh, someday soon I pray. That's why he said, pray this. Your kingdom is going to come on this earth. And the kingdoms of this world are going to be turned over to the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. Jesus will be the Lord. Jesus, his kingdom, his throne will be established on the earth. That's when he says his name will be so established that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And all these messed up kingdoms of this world will be surrendered to the kingdom of God. It'll be a time of peace and righteousness and joy on the earth. Oh, no wonder he says, pray that his kingdom comes. You know, as more, the more I see our world today, and I tell you this often because it's true, the more I realize the answer for America where we live or the nation that you're watching it from, because it's not just America that's in trouble. Our world is in trouble. And the word says, the word of God says that his name, Jesus, is the hope of the world. I can tell more than ever in my life, the older I'm getting. We need never think that the problems of our nation or any nation, those problems are gonna be solved by any political party or any political position ever being filled. Mm -mm, no, the problems of our nation, the problems of our world, it's a sin problem and it will never be resolved until the kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. No wonder, listen, if it didn't matter whether or not we pray for his kingdom to come, Jesus never would have told us to pray it. At the end of Revelation, the Bible, one of the last things that the Bible says at the end, that last part of the book of Revelation is the spirit and the bride say, come. I believe Jesus is gonna to return to a bride on the earth that's looking up to heaven saying, come, Jesus. You know what, honey, lately, I just look at this world and I think about my grandchildren, concerned for them, my own children. I just, it just makes me say, God, oh, Jesus, your kingdom come. Just come on, Lord, come on. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. See, that's what the kingdom of heaven is. It's the place the will of God is done and manifested. And so Jesus is saying that we're supposed to pray that it be that way on earth as it is in heaven. 
So we are seeking. Yes, we're carriers of the kingdom, but oh, we're just seeking that it will come. And until it comes in its fullness, we're to carry it everywhere we go. And until the kingdom of God comes in its fullness and Jesus returns as he is someday, then I break that down like this. In my sphere, this is where I break down the Lord's Prayer. In my sphere, in my sphere of authority, in the realm of authority that God's given me, I take my place and I pray in my realm. That means in my city where God's put me, my children, my husband, my grandkids, my mother, my sister. I just go through my sphere of authority, my, the, the area that God has put me in. You have that sphere too. Remember, we talk about that a lot. We're standing your ground. That's what Ephesians 6 says, that we're supposed to stand our ground. You've got your ground, I've got mine. And inside of your ground, you've got your family, you've got your children, you've got your husband or your spouse or your wife, you've got your school, you've got your the people of your, whoever is in your world, that's the place you are called to influence. And it's in your sphere of authority. Second Corinthians, Paul tells us that it's in our, those boundaries that God has given each of us that we have great authority. That's the place that you can operate in great authority. It's the sphere. It's the boundaries. It's the place God has given you. And every day, you're to make sure you are standing your ground and holding your ground in prayer. So I pray for my children like this. I do this almost every day. I say, Lord, your kingdom come. Your will be done in my, I, I start off with my husband every day. I start praying for my husband. Your will be done in my husband on earth as it is in heaven. Then I pray for any need that I know he has. Then I pray, Lord, for his mother and my mother, for my mother-in-law and my mother. I pray for them because they're in my sphere of authority. Lord, I pray your will be done in them. I pray for their health. I pray for every need that I can think of that they have. Then I begin to pray for our children. And I pray for our children like this. I say, oh God, I, and again, I love to pray the word of God. Because when you pray the word of God, you're praying the will of God. And if you're praying the will of God, you can have whatever you ask. Can't we? we love that scripture. First John 5, 14. We can have whatever we ask if we pray according to his will. So I pray the word of God over my children. Basically every day. And I declare it like this. Oh, according, according to Isaiah 54, 3. All of my children will be taught of the Lord and great will be the peace of my children. Listen to me again if you've heard me say it. All of my children, not two or three of them, all of them. Not, not, not three out of four, all of them. You, you should pray that over your children. All of them are going to walk in the peace of the Lord. All of them are going to be taught of the Lord. And great will be the peace of my children. What does that mean? Peace in them and peace between them. I want them to be carriers of peace, but I want them to have peace with each other. Not strife between each other. No. I want peace between my family, my children. So you pray that. Lord, your kingdom come. He's, his kingdom is a kingdom of peace. Righteousness, peace. Lord, your kingdom come in my children. Your will be done in my children on earth as it is in heaven. There's no strife in heaven, no strife between my children on earth. Pray that over your children. Pray that over them. Your will be done in them. According to the word, all of my children will be taught of the Lord. Great will be the peace of my children. Then I pray according to Proverbs, the 18th chapter and the 24th verse that says, there's a love that sticks closer than a brother. So I pray that my children will love each other, love each other deeper than siblings because there's a love that sticks closer than a brother who is Jesus. And according to 1 Corinthians 13, I pray my children love each other that way. Oh God, let them love each other even more than normal brothers and sisters. Right? I can pray that because the word says I can. Then I pray this, according to Ephesians 6, 2 and 3, that all of my children honor their fathers and their mothers, that their days will be long upon the earth and it will be well with them. I love to pray that. Because I want all of them, I want my daughters to, to honor their mothers-in-law. I want, I want my sons to honor their mother-in-law. I pray that right now that all of my children will honor their fathers and their mothers. And look at the reward of that, that their days will be long up on the earth and it will be well with them. That's what we want for our children. Just pray to God that they will have hearts of honor. Then, oh, this was a big one. Then I pray according to 3 John 1, 4. Lord, I have no greater joy than to know that my children walk in truth. Then I start praying over all of my children that there will be no place of deception in their hearts. None. No deception. I pray, God, this culture will not influence their mind. I pray that they will know truth, which is the word of God. I pray, God, I have no greater joy. None in this whole wide world do I have that's greater than knowing my children walk in truth. 
Come on, you pray that over them. Pray that every spirit of deception is broken. Pray right now that every influence that's a bad influence is destroyed. Pray that God sends them right influences, that they walk in truth. All of my children, I pray that. Lord, I declare all of them will walk in truth, and I have no greater joy than that. So I just stop right there and pray for that. Pray that a lot. That's a big deal. Then I pray according to Psalms 91 11, that God will send his angels and he gives his angels charge over us to, to bear us up in their hands. I said, anytime we dash our foot against a stone. So I pray protection over all my children and my grandchildren. So I just pray according to the word of God. That is what it means to pray. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Pray about all those in your sphere of your influence. I pray that over my children. I pray that over my grandchildren. Children. I prayed over my spiritual children. I prayed over my sister and her husband and my nieces. I prayed over Tony and Cece, Judy and Blenda, the Palmers, all of our family. Then I prayed over the ramp because that God's given me the ramp that my husband and I oversee. I prayed over all of my front porch friends. I love to pray for y'all daily because God's given me a responsibility to be an encourager in your life. So I love to pray for you every day. I pray for my front porch friends. Lord, your will be done in them and you're manifested on earth as it is in heaven. I pray over Israel every day because that's his land. I pray over Israel before I pray for the United States. Why? Because I love the United States because I'm, I was born here as my people. If you're from another nation, you should love your nation and pray for your nation, okay? But before I pray for my own, I like to pray for the one he loves too. Because he was raised in Israel. He was born in Bethlehem. He was raised in Nazareth. He loved the Sea of Galilee like I love the old Williams Creek out here outside my house. And if I want, before I ask him to bless my land, before I ask him to bless my nation, I want to ask him to bless his. Because Lord, I want to love your nation like I'm asking you to love mine. I want to bless Israel. Lord, I want to bless your nation and your people. You love the Jewish people. You love Israel. That's your land. That's where your memories are. Like mine are here in Williams Creek. So I pray over Israel. I pray over this nation then, America, that needs such a miracle right now of healing. Then I pray over Washington, D.C., that God will arise over Washington, D.C., that God's kingdom will come. His will will be done in Washington, D.C., on earth as it is in heaven. Then I pray, oh God, over Hamilton, Alabama, where I live. You should pray over the city where you live every day. It's in your sphere of influence. Oh, I pray over Hamilton, over our leaders, that our city will be a light in the darkness, a place of refuge. Then I pray over the valley right where I live. I even pray over my animals. I do. I pray over all of my animals, my the, the, the Palmer and, and Lily and, and the deer and, every, and every, all the animals. Why? Because God's given me stewardship of this place. And so I know some of you think that's silly. I don't care. I pray over all that God has given us. Then we pray this. After I go over all of those things and all of the, the, uh, the responsibilities that God has given me to oversee as an intercessor, then I start praying the rest of that beautiful prayer. Lord, give me this day my daily bread. You should pray that. Every day you and I need this word. And we need this word to become rhema. I need to eat of this word every day, every day. So just start saying, Lord, in this word, make this word for me, rhema. Make it bread to me. Give me today my daily bread. Not living on yesterday's bread. I need bread today. Then I pray like this, Lord, give me this day my daily bread. Then I say this, Lord, forgive me my debts as I forgive my debtors. It's always a good time to look at your heart and say, oh, search me, oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. See, God, if there's any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. It's a big deal to God that we don't have unforgiveness in our heart toward anybody. He even said, if you're coming to me to pray and you remember that you got an issue with somebody, go make it right, then come back and pray. Yeah, that's how important. It's so important he put it in the model prayer. So you stop right there and examine your heart every day. Lord, I forgive anybody by choice, by the act of my will. Then he says, lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from evil. You can just stop there as you want and just break that down saying, Lord, today protect me from any plan of the enemy. Lord, protect me from temptation. Keep me alert and discerning. Lord, don't let me be ignorant of any device of the enemy. Lord, let me walk in the spirit, not in the flesh, so the enemy has no access in my mind, in my body, in my spirit. So you just pray over that. 
And then you end your time with the Lord with that beautiful part that says, oh, yours is the kingdom, God. Yours is the power. Yours is the glory forever and forever and ever and ever. I just break those down sometimes and just stay there for a while and just breaking it down. His is the kingdom. It's the power. It's his is the glory. All of it is his. And it is now and it will be forever. And that's what we're born for. It's good for us to remember. This kingdom is his. The power is his. And the glory is his. So I'll, I just encourage you today as we're, as we're just encouraging each other in faith in, in teaching the Lord teaching us how to pray, you be encouraged today by that. Take that model prayer, break it down piece by piece. Pray that every day over your life. I just know that if Jesus said to pray that way and God answers his prayer, then we need to pray that same way and he will answer our prayer. I hope this has been encouragement to you. Would you just right quick, would you just comment below and let me hear what the Lord is speaking to you? Maybe today you want to just share with all of us as Front Porch friends the, the scriptures that you've heard that you pray or some things that you pray in those, in those places of prayer, especially within the Lord's Prayer. And we would love to hear as Front Porch friends, we need to know what you're believing for. Well, I love to hear your praise reports. Oh, there's nothing like hearing God what God has done to answer prayer. But make sure you comment because it blesses so many of us that read your, your needs and your praise. All right? And so also share this with a friend. And let's just continue our journey of encouraging each other in the Lord and encouraging each other in prayer. I love you, my sweet friend. Thank you for your prayers too. And I will be in touch again and see you to encourage you again next week. Till then, I love you.